Rwanda and Turkey have been partnering in trade and investment with a total investment of Turkish companies in Rwanda standing at $383 million. Both countries look to strengthen these relations by increasing investment and improving bilateral trade. Issa Dal, a delegate from a Turkish uh, Exporters Assembly, joins us now to discuss about Turkish investment and trade with Rwanda. Glad to have you speaking to us. Uh, you mentioned that you're here only for two days and then you leave. But of course, the context of conversation that uh, has been here is heavy. For the last 67 years, Turkish companies have made $383 million worth of investments. How heavy uh, is, are your shoulders now, knowing the kind of mandate you have to create an investment environment and jobs in the country? Yeah, actually, uh, we are very much pleased being uh, here in Rwanda. It's just for just for the two days now. Right. Uh, today we had just uh, a starting conversation on bilateral meetings, mm -hmm. and tomorrow we're going to see the industrial area and some uh, investment opportunities. Right. So uh, currently, it's um, the Turkish investment is about four hundred million dollars, but right. we are very very optimistic that we're going to increase it in the, in the next uh, couple of years to mm -hmm. a, to a duplicate number at least. Uh, Turkey, as you know, has about $800 billion of uh, GDP, so we are uh, was one of the 17th biggest uh, economies right. in the world, and um, we are exporting to 283 countries around the world, so right. that's actually a very large portfolio. And uh, we are very enthusiastic about uh, coming here, over here. Right. We have been invited. And uh, so far, we are very, very much impressed of the figures and that Rwanda is one of the uh, most reliable, actually the, probably the number one uh, reliable investment ports for, uh, for Turkish uh, right. investors, actually. Particularly in terms of governance. So what, um, what do you work out as um, uh, the best selling point for Rwanda to you? Because, I mean, you've traveled all over the world. The conducive, the size of the country might not be as, uh, uh, unless you look at, uh, look at it collectively from the region, what is the selling point for the country? The selling point is probably it's, uh, it's actually the stability uh, within the politics and with, uh, with, with your constitution. Right. And so within the African region, um, um, especially the location, so you're a little bit far from the port, but it really doesn't matter. Right. It's, the, uh, it's a taxation uh, that uh, it, it provides and also uh, the labor ship All that right. was being provided here. Mm -hmm. And there are certain incentives which actually attracts the investors in Turkey right. who wants to spread to the African market right. and uh, start actually the, the, the manner or uh, the, uh, the philosophy of Turkish people is just to, uh, once they are there, just to invest and uh, to share the profit with, with, with the countries right. and to, to share the wealth. So this is actually our, our aim. And we hope uh, within the next two, the next one more days that we will have see opportunities and invite more investors uh, within. The, uh, it's actually not a very big uh, uh, delegate now at the moment, but uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, within this year or next year, right. especially um, we have just been. Uh, it's been announced today that next year we're gonna uh, skip the visa, right. so that there was a right. visa-free travel. So that will actually make a, make a huge difference. And another point is that Turkish Airlines has been flying now for over five years uh, directly to Kigali uh, to, uh, to, to Turkey. So that's actually one very, very much important point for right. us. Right. Fantastic. Now, let's talk about your portfolio. In, last year, Rwanda imported $76.7 .7 million worth of textile and apparel. Yes. Um, we'd like to understand whether you, as you go forward, 2017, 2018, whether you focus on that or we should see a lot more diversification in the sector and into which you'd anticipate more priority. Well, actually, um, there are uh, some some uh, products that we are already importing for 78 and uh, million, as you said. Uh, but um, I think it will be more that we invest more in in Rwanda, mm. uh, that we produce more over here right. with our know-how, because uh, we have a very very huge industry in our country. Right. And we have also, as I said, uh, 238 countries in our network, on our uh, selling portfolio, right. which we could actually serve because uh, out of Rwanda, uh, the East Af the African community is a uh, trade-free, is a tax-free area, which will give actually uh, right. opportunities for the investors and also for your country. All right. Um, are we able to quantify what you'd be losing out on or what the quote pro quo w would be if you set up industries here and reduce on the on the importation into Rwanda, what would you be giving up that you think you'd make if you're based locally? 
So if we based locally, actually the one, uh, the the uh, most important part will be uh, the tax-free sales uh, mm. over Fantastic. here, and which will also drive the pr the manufacturing, the, pr the production, and uh, the, the 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 young working force over here. Uh, so we actually need to train them as well with our uh, industrial background, uh, so that uh, you have more uh, skilled, more qualified right. uh, p personnel that you can uh, get involved in the manufacturing more rather than okay, it will be also some trading, and but it's mainly based on manufacturing right. in, in this country. All right, um, uh, let me touch on that uh, in regards to textile. Um, so we have the. AGOA Act that was introduced and of course most of the conversation was about the second-hand clothes. Yeah. How has that conversation been worked in? Because in the African economies we're still struggling with execution of yeah. uh, just blocking it out all at once. How have you worked out that from your end now that you think should be replicated within the African context? Well, we are, uh, Turkey has a, a textile industry for about 40 billion dollars. Right. So uh, 22 billion dollars is for uh, exports mm. and 18 billion dollars within the within the local market. So we have actually one of we are one of the top three in in the world for home textiles and uh, within the top ten in apparel and garments. Right. So we have a large know-how, and what we want to bring in here uh, because uh, textiles is still it needs know-how, but it's very labor-intense uh, uh, manufacturing. So we want to actually we uh, we will suggest our investors to invest in the manufacturing over here, mm. but there, uh, there are still some uh, big uh, infrastructural uh, lacks that we have to uh, fulfill, like uh, getting in raw materials, right. the um, uh, semi-raw materials, and get them made up here, so we have uh, can build up a uh, certain um, textile manufacturing skill over here to be spread to the other African countries as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, from a policy level, we'd imagine mm -hmm. that um, most of the time nations uh, reach out to companies and they come in, and, uh, uh, but this time the general sentiment is that since you have a heavy portfolio here, you'd be a lot more involved with the policy and uh, export targets. Give us a view on how you think uh, Rwanda would incorporate the Turkish uh, Assembly's um, uh, uh, mandate or that particular role within its national policy. Well, um, within the international policy, uh, the Rwandan constitution and um, um, aspect of view for to the uh, to the taxation, mm. which will be enabling uh, us and uh, with our Rwandan partners to export out of uh, out of Rwanda, not just to to the African countries mm. as well as to to the other uh, country like the U.S. or Europe right. as well, or just we export into Turkey. Right. And, and does that tie into what the country would uh, rather in, would want to do with other countries? How do you come in now to provide a collaborative approach, maybe in terms of advice on how they would go about export and import with other countries? Well, there are certain problems with, on double taxations which right. needs to be sorted out. I think that it will be uh, the, the duty of, of the bureaucracy now. They're talking today, still the talkings are going on. Uh, that will need to be uh, clarified within the within the next the, the next year within this year right. or next year it will be probably starting, and then we can expect uh, the investors coming into so uh, into Africa. I think the Rwanda is providing the, the most incentive, the most attracting uh, infrastructure actually for for uh, foreign investors, not right. just for Turkey probably. All right. Uh, my final question, I've been asked to yeah. go to break, but um, uh, Turkey yeah. was declared as a strategic partner in 2008 for Kenya. Yeah. Now, that means that we have a collaborative approach or we should see yeah. a Turkey spread out in East Africa. What is your view on how you're working out, uh, help us understand how you're working out the regional perspective? On the, re on the region, uh, well, Kenya is, uh, is the port, right. actually, and uh, so we were probably uh, getting in using Kenya as, as also as an exporting as an entry part, point, right? uh, entry uh -huh. point, and also as an exit point, right. most probably. And uh, so it's, it's actually one of our strategic, part strategic partners, but uh, uh, well, the investors will actually choose it. Uh, the more we can uh, sort out the uh, taxation right. issues, uh, within the within the next next uh, the time, uh, we will have more investors coming and to traders coming into this country and call within the uh, cooperation with with all with the other ports and countries. Right. We will have uh, we will raise the uh, GDP here or in Rwanda. 